Good evening and welcome to the playoff for third place at the 2002 World Lacrosse Championships between Australia and the Iroquois Nationals at the University of Western Australia Sports Park in Perth, Western Australia. I'm Stuart Wilkinson and joining me is former Australian player Kim Gillespie. Kim, with Australia having lost a tight contest to Canada the other night, how do you think they'll back up today against the Iroquois Nationals? I'm sure the uh, Aussies will find it hard emotionally to get up after blowing a lead that they had on Canada and to, where they had hoped to have been playing in the grand final against the US and now they have to play the Iroquois Nationals. The Iroquois Nationals, they were soundly beaten by the US team in their last encounter but they did provide a spirit, spirited uh, defence in the final quarter of that match and they will take heart from that going into this game knowing that the Aussies are down emotionally so it should be a good game. I'm sure um, both nations, the Iroquois Nationals, are a very proud nation and they will put everything on the table here today. They did put up a much better performance against the US the second time round, this being the second time round against Australia, they'd probably like their chances. I'm sure they would. They are settling as this tournament goes on. They are improving and they are playing well as a team, so it would be a, good, it would be a great match. OK, we have Peter Inge facing off against Ed Shenandoah for the Iroquois. Peter Inge wins it out the back. He's been held up by Shenandoah. No call. He picks up the ground ball. Cleared out of defence and now with James Inge for Australia. Good defence. Daryl Seymour pushing James Inge. Now over to his brother again. Down to Scott Griffin and now with James Inge. To Nathan Roos and now Gordon Purdy. Little flip over to David Whiteman. Takes his left hand, moves in for the shot. Decides to move it behind to Nathan Roos who feeds the crease. The cutting cut is missed by Peter Inge. The Iroquois Nationals recover it. Joe Solomon with the ball. Looking to clear, goes the long pass. That's a good pass too. Over to Dan Burnham. And now the Iroquois on the transition, looking to create something. Dan Burnham moves in for the shot. That goes wide. Warren Brown starting in the goal for, in, for Australia. Gaywa Schindler. Gaywa Schindler being guarded by Michael Shido for Australia. Little mismatch here. Nathan Roos playing defence as an attackman. Gets backed in on by the Iroquois attack and that's backed up by the Iroquois. Neil Powless moving, drops a ball, being pressured by Ben Fleming. Kicks it up top, it's a loose pass and nice, nice pick up by David Whiteman. He's looking to create, create something quickly here. He moves in for the shot. Joe Solomon makes light work of it. And now the Iroquois Nationals clear it. Little, little flip back to Joe Solomon. The winner of this game being awarded the bronze medal for the championships. Quite an important game for both teams. Both teams not willing to leave the game without that medal. Solomon takes his time, moves it upfield. Dan Burnham with a, sh with a shot, righty shot, straight between Warren Brown's legs. J.D. Jones with the first goal for the Iroquois Nationals. J.D. Jones it was. That's a good shot. He's, been, he's done a lot of strong work for the Iroquois. He's, he's a powerful mover. You see him get up on his toes here and place that shot nicely between Warren Brown's legs. Thomas Cahill just struggling to keep up with him there. And that was just a good hard shot. Warren saw it but just couldn't get a piece of it. This time Darren Nicholas facing off against Ed Shenandoah. Wins it to himself. Being checked down. A good check. Ed Shenandoah sends the ball out of bounds off the Aussie stick and the Iroquois will clear it through Darrell Seymour. And he throws a loose pass out of bounds. 
looks to the heavens, but the Aussies will bring it in. James Inch looking to feed, sends it over to Scott Griffin, and now Nathan Roost up top. Brian Stevens on defence, Russell Brown, good ball movement by the Aussies. Looking to set up their right option, this time Ryan Garnsworthy. Looking to attack the short stick to the goal. Makes it pretty obvious, soft defense. He draws the double, kicks it over to Nathan Rainey. He gets, the slide comes to him. He moves to James Inge, he throws a bounce shot, goes wide over the top of the goals. And Nathan Roost will bring it in for the Australians. Nathan Roos looking to feed, gets it back to Ryan Garnsworth, he's trying to work his way in there. Quick feed into Scott Griffin, he's a left natural left-hander, that all happened pretty quick. Joe Solomon didn't see much of that, it was a good goal for the Aussies. Score tied at one all early in the first quarter between Australia and Uruguay Nationals. See this on the replay, Ryan with a good Good heads up feed, but Scott Griffin, great quick stick goal in his left hand. And we see it there, gets up high. Joe Solomon barely caught that, barely saw that one. Have a, has a whistle on the play. Really consistent drizzle here at Sports Park, UWA. Joe Solomon, I think the um, Australian face-off man broke on that occasion, so... Jonathan Kane Brings it in for the Uruguays. Looking to get set for a dodge. He has a long stick on him, decides to move it on to his teammate in Scott Burnham. Now he's driving hard from up top. He pops the ball out, gets popped over himself, and now Terry Sparks looking to clear the ball for the Aussies. Now Peter Inge doing a lot of legwork for the Australian team. Aussies in a little transition here. Gordon Purdy works his way in, thinks about moving it behind, throws a right across field, it's a loose pass. John Tokarua can't keep it in play, so the, can, so the Iroquois Nationals get it back. Jonathan Kane brings it in. Being double teamed, does well. Thought there might have been a flag on the play there, but the referees let them play. Gordon Purdy throws the faker and now clears it out to David Whiteman. The Aussies Looking to capitalise here on the unsettled defence. Quick ball movement. Scott Griffin from up top. His preferred left hand. Draws the double, double team and now moves it on. This is good play. Now James injuries with the with the right option. Tries the dodge. Gordon Purdy steps in, throws a little juke fake and then moves it on. Trying to work in on that long stick of Darryl Seymour. This is good defence for the Iroquois. The Iroquois would be happy to see this mismatch. Manages to push Purdy off. Pumps him in the crease again. The double comes, now James Inge. Gordon takes a wide shot, comes straight back at him off the pipe. Good, good rap check by James Inge. JD Jones manages to pick it up. And now the, the Nationals are on the fast break. He runs straight through the double, puts it in his left hand, goes all Great the way goal. himself. Great job. Great goal from D JD Jones. Gives Iroquois Nationals back the lead as they take it 2-1 over Australia. It's his second goal in the game. He's been, he's been so good and improving over this week. That's a great move. That slide came a little bit late. And he was so close, he just made sure of it. Just lifted it over the top of the defenseman. And a good, good uh, orthodox overhand shot. Peter Inge winning it again. Being ragged by Ed Solomon. He's a great, great ragger. He hustles well for those ground balls. Gets it to his teammate. Good pressure being put on by Sam Marquardt. Eventually the Iroquois move it on in Brian Stevens. 
Ryan Stevens, first time in the game. Just happy to settle it down. Put the ball. Alan Jones. And Alan Jones' stick. He requires running those little off ball picks and cuts, trying to create space for the dodger. And out comes a double from the Aussies. It's a good slide, but a good good ball movement by the Iroquois. Warren Browns come, picks up the loose one, comes running out, but there's a whistle on the play. Will it go against the Australians? For the interference, I believe. And now the Iroquois have a long shot. Warren Brown makes easy work of it, and he goes through his brother in Russell Brown on the fast break. Here the Aussies look good. Down to Scott Griffin, cross crease to James Inge. He's checked, I think, by, by Ron Cogan, and it goes out of bounds. The Aussies have the backup through Nathan Roost, and we'll bring it in. You can see the Iroquois not prepared to give an inch on these Australians. They really fancy themselves today, and why not? James Buchanan checks into the game. Little little move, moves it behind the net. Looking to feed the crease. Nothing, not much ball movement, not much off ball movement from the Aussies. Now Nathan Roost. Big right-handed move, comes out on his left, draws the double, to, throws it to James Inge. Looks to move it back, back to Nathan Roost. Nathan trying to feed the crease. Bounce pass across to James. He has the shot. Joe Solomon. Sees it early, makes a save, and the, now we come the Iroquois on the fast break. Kyle Jemison takes it across halfway, looking for someone to give it off to. Gives it off to Jonathan Kane. Jonathan Kane and the Iroquois looking to hold it out here. Scores 2 1. Iroquois with the advantage. Good movement from the Iroquois and a good save by Warren Brown. Rebounds back out and picked up by James Buchanan. Ball's thrown right up to Nathan Roost who hits Russell Brown on the fast break. This is good movement from the Aussies. Across to James Indian and a great intercept by Ron Cogan for the Iroquois. He stops that fast break. Some good desperate work from the Iroquois defence, stopping these fast breaks from the Aussies. We have a whistle on the play. We've got time out to Australia with the Iroquois Nationals leading 2-1 early in the first quarter. I think the coaches would be a little concerned, the Australian coaches, at the way the Iroquois have started so desperately. You see the face-off being won by Peter Inge, but repeatedly being stopped by Joe, by Ed Shenandoah in the face-off. They're just, they're just committing themselves to hustling for that ground ball, and they're working, working really hard. Aussies have had a lot of opportunities but haven't managed to capitalise. A lot of fast breaks. Let's see if the coaches can regroup their team and, and perhaps the Australians can score in this next offensive opportunity. And the defensive effort from Iroquois Nationals has been excellent so far with Ron Cogan and Daryl Seymour doing well especially and John Joe Solomon in goal having a good game so far. Yeah, Solomon's been good. but. It's those little things, those little one percenters that the uh, Iroquois defence are coming up with. You know, those intercepts, those knockdowns. They're the things that coaches love to see. The players are obviously committed, committed to their team having a positive outcome from today's game. In from the timeout in the first quarter with Iroquois Nationals leading Australia 2-1. With Australia in possession. What's that he's got under his hat? Oh, it's a lacrosse ball. Aussie stuff with the ball from up top. Russell Brown. Gets it around to Brad Ross. The Iroquois defence is packing in so nice and tight. Russell Brown with the little dodge from up top. Moves it to X, from moves it to behind and a quick feed. Backed up by Brad Ross, Nathan Reed feeding again, nice bounce pass. Joe Solomon, another excellent save. Russell Brown will be kicking himself and runs to the box after missing that shot. 
That's nothing you can do about that. That's just excellent saving. Here come the Iroquois and Brian, Brian Stevens. Stevens. Gets it behind. Good extended defensive pressure from the Australians. Ben Fleming chasing the Iroquois wide. The Iroquois would like to see their, their stronger players hold the ball a little bit longer in this instance, just to help them settle now. We haven't seen Gaywa Schindler do much yet for the Iroquois. He's an offensive weapon for the Iroquois Nationals. Dan Burnham to JD Jones across the top. They've been very patient. They've been very disciplined. They've been a, a good unit, these Iroquois. Aussies will have to be on their game. Both teams playing a similar style of offence, actually. Both very patient until they work out the right option to take. And this is the right option. Dan Burnham. Up to JD Jones. Back to Burnham. Burnham with the short stick and James in. James Buchanan comes out. Australia's defence extending now. Trying to keep them as wide as they can. David Whiteman having to defend this Iroquois man from behind. Iroquois seem to be waiting for someone to beat their man one-on-one -on -one to create something. A loose pass. Loose pass by the Iroquois. Picked up by Nathan Reese. Checked down. But picked up by Terry Sparks. And now over to Brad Ross. Aussie's in a... In a Six on five situation. Quick ball movement, a little flip play. Doesn't eventuate in anything, but they move the ball on. And a, and a good feed by Nathan Reese. Not handled that time by the Aussie attackman, but now the Iroquois come up with it. On the fast break. Great goal. Gaywa Shindler, there's that man we asked to get in the game, and he's straight into it with a good shot. Um, good transition by the Iroquois on that occasion. Just get the ball in the go-to guy stick and he will make sure of it. And Iroquois extend their lead to 3-1 over Australia in the first quarter of this playoff for third place. I certainly got the jump on the Australians here. As we predicted, the Australians starting slowly having lost the other day to Canada. Iroquois with their tails up now. Peter Inge wins again. Scott Griffin feeding Gordon Purdy, steps in for the shot. No backup by the Australians. That's a, that's a fundamental error they will not be happy with. Coaches will be screaming at that. Joe, Joe Solomon brings it in for the Iroquois. Quick to realise there was no backup and ran to the baseline as quick as he could to claim the ball. You often see the goalies do that. They're often keen not to, to get the ball in their stick and out of an attackman stick. Definitely leading from the front, this experienced goalkeeper. No time limit on the clear. They eventually clear it through. Jamie Pierce. Jamie Pierce. Over to Jonathan Kane. Jonathan Kane for the Iroquois. Just settling it down now. And now the Iroquois with a two-goal buffer aren't in any rush at all. Sending the message to the Aussies. They're not prepared to give up this bronze bronze medal. Agawa Schindler working from behind with Michael Shido playing defense. Gets Byron oh. Brown, makes a save, picks up the ground ball, quickly outlets it. Up to Michael Shido on the fast break. Michael gives it off to Scott Griffin. Scott Gives it into Ryan Garnsworthy, who misses the ground ball. Australians not committing to their work here. Gordon Purdy comes up with it. We have a foul on the play and an intercept by the Iroquois. So that Ryan Garnsworthy shoots the ball after the whistle's gone. Iroquois complain, but there's no call. And we have a technical foul on the Iroquois, so therefore the Australians will have an extra man opportunity and will 
will play a six on five attacking move. With them trailing Iroquois in the first quarter, three goals to one. They'll be looking to score here. The Aussies need something to get their game moving. They're not in the game at all at this point. David Whiteman warming up from up top. Over to Russell Brown. Need to build something constructive here, the Aussies. Moving to their 1-3-2. One, one man behind in James Buchanan. So feeds it up top to Nathan Rain. He takes the shot. It goes wide, so James Buchanan will bring it in again. Bounce passes over to Rainey. The Whiteman now to Brown on the quick pass across field, but comes loose. James Buchanan back up to Whiteman. He's dangerous from this range, but Solomon makes another great save. Australia missed the ground ball. Kyle Jamison. Kyle, up with Kyle it. Jamison, he makes sure of it. And now the Iroquois are going to just look after that ball like gold right now and just run out this clock. Alan Jones for Iroquois. And look to graft out a goal. They've been very disciplined and very impressive early in this match. Over to Scott Burnham. Hearing instructions from the coach. Scott Burnham takes his man behind. Makes a little little move. Alan Jones. Little split move from behind, working him back and forth. Not much movement off ball for the Iroquois. You can see the Australian defence watching him. Draws the double and kicks it right across crease to Neil Powellis, who can't make the shot. Had to let off for the Aussies, and here, come, here they come on the fast break now. Michael Shido into Whiteman, and now to Russell Brown. James Buchanan feeding from behind. Thinks about going himself, gets double teamed. Feeds it across to Nathan Roos, and he makes sure of it. Nathan's a very, very experienced player. See how the way he correctly shot that one with an overhand, overhand bounce shot. Good work in the crease there from both him and Scott Griffin. Both were open on their cuts. Australia closed the gap on Iroquois, with Iroquois leading 3-2 in the first quarter. Aussies had a lot of opportunities, but that's the first one they've been able to get past Joe Solomon in a while. Peter Inge from the face-off again. Now there's t that's time. And that's quarter time with Iroquois Nationals leading Australia 3-2 in the playoff for third place at the 2002 World Championships. Welcome back to second quarter action between Australia and Iroquois Nationals with Iroquois Nationals leading 3-2 in this playoff for third at the World Championships of Lacrosse 2002. James Inge wins the face off straight out to Gordon Purdy, can't pick it up. Picked up by John Tokarua and now again by Scott Griffin. Brad Ross settling it down for the Australians. Australians looking to get back into this game with a slow start, having lost their earlier game against Canada, and now in this th um, bronze medal playoff against a very desperate and committed Iroquois Nationals team. Peter in shaping to dodge, decides to kick it to Brad Ross on the side. 
Jericho is happy to switch a short stick on to Brad. And Brad Ross now takes him on. Takes him on the left side, turns back, comes righty, draws the double team, moves it on. Darren Nicholas trying to back in, draw, throws it across to Peter Inge, he's dispossessed. And now Scott Griffin picks it up. Throws across to Gordon Purdy with his little fake dodge, moves it on to Darren Nicholas. And now Peter Inge. Gordon, up, Gordon Petty from up top with the split dodge, draws the double. Brad Ross comes to the bottom corner, throws the low worm burner, and it goes out of bounds. No worms on this AstroTurf. And now Nathan Roos brings it in. Gordon Petty with the short stick, trying to, trying to create some space for himself. Now Nathan Roos tries his hand from up top. Good pressure. Nathan Roost feeding from up top, feeding from behind, gives it up to Darren Nicholas. And he tries his hand at an outside shot. Joe Solomon again. Joe Solomon does it easy. Jericho is national, now playing with a lot of confidence. Joe Solomon throws the outlet pass up to the halfway line. Kyle Jemison runs onto it. Good clear. Aussies in that last offensive move looking quite disjointed in their approach. Let's see what the Iroquois can come up with. Delby Powers. He's another one of these strong attack midfielders that the Iroquois Nationals love to penetrate the goals with. He's looking to feed now. Sorry, no, it was JD Jones. Little, there's a foul, a holding foul, I think. Let's wait for the call from the referee. We have a 30 second penalty on Scott Griffin for Australia. So the Iroquois Nationals will have an extra man advantage. Scott Burnham bringing it in for the Iroquois. Referees just clarifying an issue with the Australian bench. Iroquois start their man up play. Good movement. Nice goal. That's a real textbook move from the Iroquois. You can see them draw the man and then quickly move the ball on. And a nice stick fake and a head fake from that left-handed attackman there. He steps in, looks down low, and drags the defence, the goalkeeper down, and sticks it over his shoulder. The old dip and dunk move. Looked like Neil Powers as Iroquois move out to a four goal to two lead over Australia. Iroquois toiling hard for their rewards. Well deserved of this two goal buffer at this middle of the second period of this game. Comes off the referee's foot there that time the ball. Play on. And we've got a hold by the Australians on that loose ball. Peter Inge asked the question, but um, the Iroquois will bring it in through Dan Burnham. Iroquois getting on a roll again here. It's been great to see the way the Iroquois are prepared to attack through different players, being very patient. JD Jones. But having lots of options. Alan Jones. Dan Burnham. Dan Burnham with a short stick defenseman on him. Sorry, my mistake, Delby Powers. Now taking him to the goal. Russell Brown throws a wrap check. He's got to be careful. The refs are calling these loose fouls, but he dishes off behind. Nice goal, Gaywash. Gaywash Schindler again in the game. He really is a great goal scorer. You see him just 
float around the crease there. He stick fakes high twice. We saw that earlier in the week and, and he really did make sure of that goal. The Iroquois Nationals making light work of Australia at the moment, extending their lead to five goals to two. I think we have another timeout by Australia. They must be concerned at this point, having a three goal buffer for the Iroquois. Coaches for Australia barking instructions at his troops. Contrasting that, the Iroquois would be quite happy with their work so far in this bronze medal playoff. back in from the timeout in the bronze medal game between Australia and Iroquois with the Iroquois Nationals leading five goals to two. Iroquois is looking the far better side at this stage of this bronze medal playoff. Coaches for Australia hoping they can rattle their troops into action here. Another win to Peter Inge, a fast break. He's been ragged down from those Iroquois defending midfielders. And now they get hunt for the ground ball. Comes off the Iroquois foot, but it manages to stay in play and a good pick up. Cal Smith, excellent work, keeping hold of the ball. Retaining possession for Iroquois. Iroquois call a timeout while they've got possession. Still leading five goals to two in the second quarter. back in from the timeout in the second quarter with the Iroquois Nationals leading Australia five goals to two. Light rain continues to fall. As you can see, just under 15 minutes remaining in the second quarter. Jamie Pierce brings it in for the Iroquois. Uses the referee as a pick. Picks it over to JD Jones being defended by Sam Marquard. Good defence. Over to Scott Burnham. Scott Burnham, being so often being isolated by his teammates with the, having the short stick on him, not on this occasion. Over to C Jamie Pearce. Jamie Pearce this time. They try it Scott Burnham. As the Aussies quick matching up there. Their short stick and their long stick, getting their switches, making it hard for the Iroquois to attack. Neil Powers. Dan Burner moving, working into the right side of the goal. Being rap checked and dispossessed by Russell Brown. Likes to go to his brother. Anticipated well by the Iroquois. Fakes high, looks low, puts it high again, but it's a great save by Gordon Purdy off the line. And the Iroquois have the backup and they will get the ball back. Warren Brown will be pretty thankful that Gordon Purdy's a handy goalkeeper. 
turned it, referees have turned it over. Bit of confusion going on. It is Iroquois National Ball. Kaywa Schindler from behind the net. Looking to take the Australian long stick to the net. This time he moves it on up top. Dan Burnham. Dan Burnham. Moves it down low. Goalie comes out. It's picked up by Terry Sparks and out to Warren Brown again. And now Gordon Purdy will clear the ball for Australia. He, he wears a wrap check from the Iroquois riding attackman. So 16, number 16, Neil Powless will sit down for one minute after throwing that loose wrap check to the kidneys of Gordon Purdy. So therefore Australia will have a man up opportunity as they start in their familiar 3-3 three, three formation. Three men up top, three men down low. Iroquois in their five man zone. Ball movement from the Aussies. Now the cut has come. Now they're floating into a 1-4-1 over to Russell Brown. Takes a shot and Joe Solomon makes another excellent save for his team. He's done a, an awesome amount of work. Australia staying there 1-4-1. Up top to David Whiteman. Now behind through James Buchanan. Backside Nathan Rooster. Nathan Rainey makes a shot but saved again by Solomon. He throws a massive outlet pass. Goalie comes out and he comes out and gets an interference call. Um, not sure what happened. The, ref the goalie asked the referee the question. I'm going to say that he interfered with the play while he was greater than three metres away from the ball. So therefore Ben Fleming will now defend JD Jones who brings it in. Out to Neil Powers. Neil Powers dodging from up top. Goes on his preferred left hand, being beaten on by Nathan Rainey. Has a shot, bounce, rebounds out. We have a flag on the play. And Terry Sparks will sit down for a minute for Australia. He's been given a one minute penalty for the slashing foul. So this ill discipline will cost the Aussies here. They're still three goals down in this game. Iroquois will have an extra man for one minute. We've got a referee's timeout at the moment. No, back in. And the Aussies extending their defence, I think with little time on the clock. Actually, the, there's plenty of time on the clock. What's happened is the refs have called a stall against the Iroquois, so they have to get it in and keep it in the box now. And the ball gets shaken loose by Russell Brown. Good, strong rap check. His brother Warren comes out and... Time out to the Iroquois Nationals in this second quarter with Iroquois Nationals leading five goals to two over Australia. We come back in from the timeout with Iroquois Nationals leading Australia five goals to two with ten minutes left in the second quarter. Iroquois is starting in possession after picking up that ground ball. 
I think they wanted to call the timeout after Australia extended their defensive pressure. And while they were a man down, it was a surprising move. It caught the Iroquois coaching unawares. So they now have the ball and are a lot more composed. Scott Burnham will start this passage of play. We have another whistle on the play as the referees try and sort things out. Discussing issues with the Iroquois coaching staff. I think it, we've got a problem with the Iroquois coaching staff stepping onto the field. And he's been asked to stay in his little coach's walk there. Otherwise it'll be a technical foul. Scott Burnham brings it in. Iroquois with an extra man advantage. Alan Jones. Over to JD Jones. Iroquois setting up into 1-5. Three guys across the top. And then pumps it inside. Good save by Scott. Sorry, by Warren Brown. Backed up by the Iroquois again. You'll see th three attackmen near the goal. One on the crease in the middle and one on either side of the goal. But this time the Aussies come up with it and they're on the fast break here. Russell Brown throws a loose pass and it's picked up by Joe Solomon. Joe Solomon swings it over and Alan Jones comes up with it. He's getting pressured by, by Michael Wan. Flag on the play. Checks into the game, but he, I think he's been awarded a foul because he collected the head of J.D. Jones. So the Iroquois have another man up opportunity. Gaywa Schindler to bring it in for them. Perhaps the factor that cost the, the Australians the gold medal playoff could be costing them here, and that being their ill discipline. JD Jones loses that ball. Ben Fleming puts pressure on that ground ball, comes up with it, looking for help, does the right thing, returns it to his defensive end in Warren Brown. Now the Aussie long sticks combine to clear it. Back to Ben Fleming. Nathan Roosh now settling it down for the Australians. Nathan, experienced player, played at Hobart College in the US. Had tremendous success there. He understands that Australia really need to just settle down their offence and grind out a goal here. Penetrating the Iroquois with their right options. They seem so disjointed today the Australians having lost to, lost to Canada earlier this week James Buchanan he's been great for Australia this week and well, looking to feed good defence from Brian Stevens. And a, and a feed into Gordon Purdy. And now the loose ball's loose. And you see some bodies getting flying through the crease there. Daryl Seymour wants to tell Ryan Garnsworthy about that body check he just laid on. Some good physical work. You can see the determination of these Iroquois fellows. have been very committed throughout this whole game. And that's why they're still three goals up. Loose ball push on the play. Nathan Roos brings it in for Australia. James Buchanan behind the net. Now Nathan Roos backing in. James Buchanan looking to feed those cutters. A bit stagnant by the Aussies. Not that many cutters on the run there. Now Gordon Purdy starts. Draws a double. Swings it behind to James Buchanan again. This is good defence by the Iroquois. And there's a nice feed across crease by James Buchanan to Scott Griffin. Scott can't get a handle on it and it goes out of bounds. So the Iroquois foil another offensive attempt by the Aussies. And we're just on six minutes remaining in the first half. Iroquois Nationals lead Australia five goals to two. Joe Solomon shaping for the big outlet. 
Kicks it over to Mark Burnham. Down the line to Jonathan Kane. Crosses halfway. Iroquois is looking very composed. You can hear the coaching staff of the Iroquois barking instructions. They'd be very pleased with their team's effort to this point. Jamie Pearce. I've been very patient. Neil Powless. Scott Burnham. Kicks it down to Jonathan Kane. Iroquois struggling to get the mismatch going where they can dodge the short stick from the Australians. Here we go now. Looks like Delby Powless. Back to Jonathan Kane. Looking for something to open up for him. And the defensive pressure from the Aussies is just a little... It's gone up a notch here, trying to get that ball back. And here we go. A good, a good check by James Buchanan. But I think you'll find his loose hand was just in the back of his opponent there in Delby Powers, so he will get the ball back. Kicks it to Jamie Pearce. Iroquois looking to build on this lead. Jamie Pearce moves it on to Gaywa Schindler. He looks very strong on this left side. Jonathan Kane threatens a shot. This is good offensive work by the Iroquois, although they're not scoring and they're they, they don't have any blistering weapons that they can just threaten the goal immediately with. They are creating something. They are grafting out a goal, which is very good. I'm sure their coaches will be happy with this. Keeping pressure on the Australian defence. Delby Palace again. They're in no rush. Is it just Scott Burnham? Scott Burnham with the short stick defending him. Tries his hand at a dodge, goes out, comes out on his right hand, gets a bit of room, kicks it over to Gawa Schindler, has the shot and goes wide. Backed up by Neil Powless. Iroquois retained possession. Scott Burnham again. With the long stick switched on him, draws a double, feeds it inside, and Iroquois' man ends up in the crease, tumbled in there on his own says the referee so no he's been overruled so it was a push according to the other referee so therefore Iroquois will start with it again Kewa Schindler great mover whoa wild wild rat check by um, Terry Sparks of Australia you rarely see those long sticks throw rap checks and, and that one was very clumsy he's telling himself off as he walks down the penalty box for a 30 second penalty so this is what I'm talking about with the Iroquois spending a lot of time in possession putting a lot of pressure on the Aussies and eventually causing them to make a mistake and now they end up in this extra man offense with very little time left in the first half Iroquois Nationals have held Australia scoreless in the second quarter today moving the ball up top looking to feed those bottom corners they're thrown into the middle J.G. Jones' pass is picked off. Michael One rattles it loose. And then Thomas Cahill picks it up and now moves it on to Brad Ross. He's got some wheels. And he, and he just decides to pull it out. Less than two minutes remaining in this first half. Another wayward pass from the Australians. Brad Ross misses it, I think, on that occasion. But Gordon Purdy's done some work here to try and back it up and then tries to play for the for the pushing foul. And I think he might have convinced the referee. Yes, he has. I've seen him do that a few times. There's been a fair few acting awards that could have been um, handed out over this past week. Here at the yes, tournament. that's right, Stuart. We saw um, um, Chris Sanderson, the Canadian goalkeeper, take a terrific dive the other day to earn his team an extra man advantage. And that one wasn't too bad. Just gains Gordon possession for Australia. James Inge from behind. Good defence from Daryl Seymour. David Whiteman on the dodge. 
Gets double teamed and comes up with a loose shot. Easy save by Joe Solomon. Iroquois is quite content with less than a minute to go in this quarter. Quite content just to wind the clock down and go into the break. Three goals up. International rules allow the players to just play, play catch. There's no rush. Unfortunately, they can't play catch that effectively this time. So they've turned it over, and the Aussies will get one more chance to peg it back. Gordon Purdy bringing it in now. Nathan Rainey asking for his teammate to clear out so they can have a little run at his man. And he gets a bit of space, draws a double team, moves it on to Purdy. Purdy's checked, he moves it behind. Shot by James Inge, deflected off the Iroquois stick. They try to gain possession, comes loose. Clock's on the field, and we've got a flag on the play. Iroquois defender being called for that slashing foul late in the, in the second quarter. And that is half time with the Iroquois Nationals leading Australia five goals to two in the bronze medal playoff. So will that mean that Australia will start with a man advantage in the third quarter? It will indeed, Stuart. The Aussies will start with possession. Iroquois will have one man in the penalty box. But still with a three goal buffer at this stage, the Iroquois will be quite happy with their work so far in this first half. Welcome back to the third quarter of the playoff for the bronze medal between Australia and the Iroquois Nationals, with the Iroquois Nationals leading Australia five goals to two. The Iroquois held the Aussies scoreless in that second quarter, but now the Australians have an uh, extra man advantage with that late one minute penalty committed by the Iroquois defence. Scott Griffin will bring it in for Australia. And we'll see if these Aussies can be gelled into action after that half time interval. If they can't get the crowd involved, try and stir them into some action. Loose pass missed by David Wyman. He manages to recover it though. As they start their 1 3 2 offense. And a nice feed backside. Oh! I thought that went in, but Nathan Roost has missed the shot. And so Joe Solomon has picked it up. He's happy to clear it. Nice outlet pass too. And he moves it upfield. Kyle Jamison. Kyle Jamison. Now the Iroquois is still about another 40 seconds on their man down penalty. But we have a, I think we have an offside call on the play. So Australia will get the ball back. They still have time to, to organise a man up play. Russell Brown comes in, takes the shot. Great shot. Nice, hard, left-handed bounce shot into the top corner of the net. See him set himself here, get some room and get some heat on it. And Joe Solomon saved a lot of good goals, but he was unable to get close to that one. It was a nice goal. Australia closing the deficit that Iroquois have. A lead of two goals with Iroquois leading five to three. Peter Inge facing off, being very successful here today and he's perhaps interfered with there but there's no call and he gets it himself. Oh, a nice wrap check but he manages to hold on to him a little bit there so I dare say that yes he will be given a 30 second penalty and Australia have another extra man opportunity. The thing that had been so important in getting the Iroquois up in this game had been their discipline over the Australians. And now working against them now as I've committed two early fouls in this, second, in this third period. Here comes the man up move. 
Good catch by Nathan Rainey. Sends it behind to James Buchanan. James Buchanan comes around, tries a little bounce shot on the low angle. It doesn't go, but Russell Brown backs it up for Australia. Again, good work from Joe Solomon in goal for Iroquois. Whiteman steps in and makes the shot. He's been so threatening from on top of that, up the top of that goal in all games I've seen him play this week. The man down defense just couldn't extend out to him. Joe Solomon has just started this third quarter a little bit shaky. And Australia closed the gap again with the Iroquois Nationals leading five goals to four. And with Peter Inge doing a lot of good work in here for Australia, Australia still with a chance. This time he goes out the back to himself. Nice, clever little goose, unable to pick it up. Ben Fleming gets it over to Warren Brown, who's been double teamed. Now back to Fleming and now to Terry Sparks, who will clear it. Ozzy started this third period a lot better. Brad Ross down low to Jamie Buchanan. And now Ryan Garnsworthy attacking. Tries to little bull dodge there, bull his way in there. Now he moves it on. Up to Buchanan. To get some room, he'll, he'll shoot this. This time he moves it on to Purdy. Now to Ryan Garnsworthy again. Takes a shot, takes a deflection. And is backed up by Darren, by Jamie Buchanan. And he brings it in. He tries his hand at a little dodge here against the short stick of Kyle Jamison. He's faking those feeds. Now he throws a bounce shot out to Whiteman. Bounce pass out to Whiteman. Goes out of bounds. But the Iroquois Nationals getting possession. I think it came off Scott Griffin and rather than being called a deflection, it's been awarded to the Iroquois goalkeeper. Joe Solomon brings it in again. Again, just marshalling his teammates where he wants them. Goalie really is the quarterback for the defence. He needs to um, get his players in the right position, try and make those riding attackmen run as far as they can, give the players a lot of time to clear the ball. And here they do. They clear it quite easily. Alan Jones. Down to Dan Burnham. Dan Burnham, he's, he's been a senior and a cool head for his Iroquois teammates. Coach is asking for patience from the Iroquois. It's a thin line to walk between patience and inactivity. You see, teams need to be constructive. Here we go here. Dan Burnham trying to get past, can't get past the defense. It's not a bad option though. James Buchanan uses his loose hand to, to push him off. But Burnham goes all the way himself. Doesn't worry about what the referees has to say. Just throws that nice left-handed bounce shot past Warren Brown. And gives Iroquois Nationals a handy two-goal lead. You can see here, quarter. James Buchanan tries to grab hold of Burnham, but he just keeps going. Says, thank you very much. The Australian defence doesn't send the slide to Burnham. They kind of honour James, Bu James Buchanan's defence but it's not up to standard on this occasion. And a nice bounce shot. Iroquois leading six goals to four in the third quarter. Peter Inge really taking control now over this face-off. Ed Shenandoah's had a long week, done a lot of work. Finding it tough now. Now Nathan Rainey. Over to Scott Griffin. And now up to Russell Brown. Ozzy's just looking a little more composed in this third quarter. Nathan Ruth feeds inside. Scott Griffin tries the behind the back shot. It goes wide and is backed up by Nathan Roost. Nathan comes in looking to feed. Has the short stick on him. And perhaps when I think about dodging that, that fella, now here he comes. He looks to feed across crease, perhaps forces it into the middle there. 
It's deflected out, but came off Australia, so therefore it'll be Iroquois ball. Ron Kogan to bring it in. Iroquois still with a two goal lead. 6 4 the score. Mark Burnham back to Joe Solomon. Australians running a 3-3 a ride, dropping right back at the halfway line, giving the trying to crowd the Iroquois near the halfway line. Giving Joe Solomon plenty of room. He's really going to have to throw a touchdown pass. And yeah, here we go. The Aussies have clogged it up. But the Iroquois pick up the ground ball. That's good work. And now giving it back to Solomon, although he drops it. And he throws a loose pass. And now the Iroquois are under pressure. Matthew Windsor puts good pressure on that ground ball, picks it up himself. Russell Brown takes a late hit, gets a flag, and now the Aussies must push it to keep, keep the play moving. Nathan, Ro Nathan Rainey from up top has a shot, and that's saved by Solomon. But as we saw on the, on the camera work there, Russell Brown just moved it on and just took a little late hit, and therefore Iroquois will sit down. One of their players will sit down for the one minute for the illegal body check. Australia will have a man advantage. Australians starting in a 1-3-2 formation. One man behind. Kicks it off to the right side and now to James Buchanan who feeds Russell Brown on the bottom left. But he can't get the shot off on target at least, so Jamie Buchanan will bring it in. Iroquois not putting pressure on that feeder behind and that's causing him a lot of a lot of problem trying to keep tabs on those cutters. Here come the Iroquois on the fast break. Kyle Jemison. Feeds inside. It's missed but picked up by Gaywa Schindler who has the shot. Russell Brown out of his crease but makes the save. Keeps him keeps his call. Cool. Gives it to his brother Russell. And now the Aussies rebound. Bounce pass across to Whiteman. Whiteman steps in for the shot. Nice. Oh, we thought that was in, but it was wide. Solomon makes a save. Now the Iroquois looking to rebound again. Good, good clearing by the Iroquois team. They redirected it. Alan Jones. Alan Jones makes an easy catch. Now the Iroquois offense will look to occupy possession here for a little while. Their defense has, has done too much work. They'll need to give them a rest, get their composure back. Dan Burnham just walking it down slowly. I think he's raising his hand. He knows he has the right option there, but he's not looking to go this time. I think he'll be looking to perhaps get it next time he gets it up top. He might have a try. J.D. Jones. J.D. Jones, he wouldn't be too clean to tackle um, Ben Fleming. He's, he's been strong in defence for Australia today. There we go, he dispossesses him. And here comes another another good check by Ben Fleming. And that's, they've put a lot of pressure on the Iroquois here. Nice little body check by Ryan Gunsworthy. But, and the Iroquois had his foot on the line, so therefore... Australia will be given the ball back from where it went out. Ryan Garnsworthy looking to dodge it out himself. Does it easily. Aussies on a transitional play here. James Buchanan looking to create something. Moves it up top. Back to Garnsworthy. The shot is wide. The goals need to be straightened up once more by the referee. With the Iroquois Nationals leading 6-4 in the third quarter. David Whiteman to bring it in for Australia. Gordon Purdy with a dodge from up top. He can hold the ball for long periods and absorb a lot of pressure. He's very clever. He waits for that double team to come there. He moves it on to Buchanan up top. 
who feeds it behind to Ross. Good movement from the Aussies. Looks backside to Purdy again. He fakes and then shoots and misses. So Whiteman will bring it in again. Brad Ross for the Australians. He's quite fleet-footed. Here he comes. He's got room now. Takes a left-handed shot. Saved by Solomon. Rebounds thrown behind the back by Scott Griffin and goes wide. Whiteman looking to pump it in. Purdy with the shot. Nice this guy. time it goes. He's a clever mover, Gordon. He's very experienced. You can see there he faked. He stood up the defenseman and the goalkeeper stepped around him and then just shot it around his hip. I think the goalkeeper was just a little bit screened that time. Joe Solomon looks to the skies after that, missing that save, but it was just a good hard shot. Right on the pipe. Peter Inge again. This time he's been called for the break, and Ed Shenandoah has possession for the Iroquois. With the Iroquois Nationals leading Australia six goals to five in the third quarter in this bronze medal playoff. Jonathan Kane looking to dodge. Joel Printup. Into the game for the Iroquois. Now the Aussies try and double team as the Iroquois substitute. Joel print up again from behind. First time in the game. Jonathan Kane. He's a strong mover. Look at that. That's a great dodge. He gets room for the shot, but Terry Sparks does the work for Australia on the backup. He's quite happy. Happy to bring that ball in for his country. Kawa Schindler looking to ride him. A bit too close. Aussies clear it through Warren Brown. Now James Inge clearing it for Australia. Ball gets moved behind. Now Whiteman coming around on his left hand. Throws it across to Rainey. Rainey moves it up top to Brad Ross and now to James Inge, he has the short stick on him. Coming around the right, now the left again. Looking to go himself, he feeds the crease. He goes loose, but Whiteman gets the shot off somehow and, Ro and Scott Griffin backs it up. Score 6-5 in this bronze medal playoff. The intensity seems to have lifted from both sides. Both sides like to go in at three quarter time with a lead. Brad Ross draws the double, moves it out to Whiteman. Whiteman's shot goes way wide. And Russell Brown brings it in for Australia. He feeds the crease in Scott Griffin, and Scott Griffin somehow nice finds goal. a seam and somehow gets it to go. But that's a clever, clever play for those two West Australian players. Scott, that's a great cut and a good feed. He was way open, and he just found that small little spot to make it go. And that ties the scores in this third quarter. Six goals all. This is a much better quarter from the Australians fighting back to tie this game. James Peter Inge from the face-off. Hasn't lost too many today. Ball's loose. Picked up by the Iroquois. Good work from Kyle Jamison. Looking to cre create something on the run here. Being, being pressured by John Tuckerul. And Warren Brown comes out and lays the body check on him. And Gordon Purdy tries the dive. You could see that time there was nowhere. He was nowhere near him. But he's been given. Oh, he asked the question, but thankfully the referee didn't fall for that. A loose pass from the Iroquois. Ben Fleming can't pick it up either. So now we're in for more rough stuff. Tokarua goes backwards. 
Gordon Purdy uses his stick fake and then gets himself out of trouble. Gives it to John Tokaru again. The Aussies eventually clear. Brad Ross with the ball behind the goals for Australia. That was a great check from the Iroquois defenseman. I couldn't even see that check. Gordon Purdy moves it up to Scott Griffin. Now to David Whiteman. Pumps the crease. Oh, no. Scott Griffin again on the lefty cut. Another West Australian combination. You see that. It all happened pretty quick. And Joe Solomon couldn't get there in time. There it is. Scott Griffin, and you can see the ball just land just inside the pipe. That's perfect placement. Other side of the goal to his last shot, Joe Solomon wouldn't have been expecting that. And he really made quick work of that goal. And Australia take the lead in the third quarter, leading Iroquois seven goals to six. Matthew Schomburg taking the face off against Ed Shenandoah. Ball pops out the front to Ed Shenandoah. Picked up by the Iroquois attack, but a nice body check by Warren Brown, although he has been called for the illegal body check. In basketball, that'd be what's known as a good foul, saving a goal being scored. So Gawa Schindler, unlucky not to score there, but probably a good, good foul in the end for the Australians. Gawa Schindler would have had a, a uh, open net to shoot at it had he, had he been able to get that shot off. So the Iroquois with their man up opportunity. And Scott Gunns with he takes goal for Australia. Quick ball movement. Looking to get a shot backside on this cold goalie and it goes in. Great shot by Alan Jones. You can see any time the teams move the ball so quickly around the perimeter, they can catch the defence napping and it's no different on that exchange. Alan Jones steps in, gets balanced. Gunsworthy just come off the bench. Didn't see that. And that's a timeout call with the scores tied in the third quarter. It's seven goals all. And we come back in from the timeout with less than a minute remaining in the third quarter and scores tied in this bronze medal playoff at 7 all. This small crowd appreciating this bronze medal playoff. Both nations desperate to come away from this tournament with, with some reward. And less than a minute for one team to possibly go in at three quarter time with a lead. Peter Inge facing off. Had a lot of success today. Here he comes again with a quick clamp out to himself at the front. Picks up the ground ball. Gordon Purdy takes it back. As the Aussies try to get their goalie out of the penalty box. Gordon still holding possession. And now Russell Brown comes out of the penalty box. Draws a check. Aussies on the break here. He throws it across to John Tokarua. Gives it to Scott Griffin. Two fakes and shoots it home. Great shot and great ball movement by the long stick in there. JT, John Tokarua. And also Russell Brown with that good heads up play. Somehow the goal ends up upside down, but either way, the goal will count. You'll see here, that's a lovely dish off by the long stick. Scott Griffin, he's very experienced on that left side, and he makes sure of it. 
got awfully close to the crease there with that shot and gives Australia an eight goals to seven lead in two the third quarter. It does indeed. You can see those two stick fakes of Scott Griffin on the on the replay. We'll see it again. Just finally gets Joe Solomon standing up high and then he sends it down low and it goes in. Clock comes onto the field, time winding down. Aussies with a one goal lead. Probably 10 seconds in the quarter. Peter Inge, time for a quick one out the front to himself. This time the Iroquois defence midfield gets there first. Ed Shenandoah trying to push a quick one for his country. Loose wrap check by Terry Sparks and there goes the time. And that's three quarter time with Australia leading Iroquois Nationals eight goals to seven. Welcome back to the fourth quarter of the bronze medal playoff between Australia and the Iroquois Nationals, with Australia leading eight goals to seven. We have a break in the rain as the players take the field. Seven goals all. Sorry, no, it's eight to seven. To the Australians. Australians having a great third quarter. The Iroquois starting with possession. Iroquois with a man still in the penalty box, box, so they do have a man down at the moment. Dan Burnham moving forward. The, ref the coach for the Iroquois is asking how much time left on that penalty. So they try and wind the clock down here and get their full quota of players onto the field. Scott Burnham for Iroquois. Being pressured by Terry Sparks for Australia. Double team trying to set up for Team Australia. Russell Brown comes out to try to keep pressure on. And we, have a, and we have a flag on the play. The referees have been consistent and we've got a second foul as well. They have called a lot of pushes today. This time Russell Brown's been awarded 30 seconds for the push. And 32, John Tokarua for Australia, will sit down for one minute unsportsmanlike. I think he had a word to say to the referee. The referee didn't take that too kindly. So Iroquois with a two-man advantage in the fourth quarter, looking to get this back to a, an even game. Alan Jones, JD Jones. Good ball movement, outside shot, picked up easy by Warren Brown. Throws a quick outlet up to Scott Griffin. Scott Griffin lays the willow and Daryl Seymour. Daryl Seymour kicks up at him, kicks up at Scott Griffin and referees don't don't worry about that. So we're back in the play here. Alan Jones takes a shot, goes wide. Iroquois bring it in again. Still with a two man advantage. JD Jones. They look to shoot from these sides here when they whenever they move it across across the field. Scott Burnham just wide with the shot. Throws that little stick fake, gives himself a little extra angle. Can't make it go. Gaywa Schindler. JD Jones. Throws it in the crease. He requires a cover the ground ball. Gaywa with some room. No one in goal, but Warren Brown manages to get back and then chases up the rebound, flicks it out forward. Now the, now the Aussies are ragging on this, the Iroquois defence trying to get that ground ball. Daryl Seymour taken down. The crowd getting pretty verbal at this stage. Looks like another penalty for the Aussies. And JD Jones will start with the ball in the offensive half for Iroquois. 
Eight gold. Scott Griffin will sit down one minute for the slashing penalty. So Iroquois must score here. Still, still two men down. Good defence by, by Michael Wan. Ball's moved on. Good ball movement by the Iroquois. They look good here. And the shot goes wide again. Scott Burnham gets there and keeps possession for Iroquois. Only just, but here they go again. Iroquois must score here. JD Jones over to Alan Jones. The bottom corner. Nice goal, Scott Burnham. Scott Burnham. That's a textbook 3-3 play where the middleman will throw it down to the bottom right corner, catching those defensemen unawares. Here we go, great angle and a great shot. Excellent camera work. The camera work's been exceptional this tournament this week, Kim, don't you think? Certainly has. The replay there, leaving nothing for the imagination. And that's tied scores up at eight all in the fourth quarter of the bronze medal playoff with 16 minutes remaining. Guys, teammates working hard for that ball and Kerasoy is coming up with it. Intercepted, or at least deflected by the Australians. Ed Shenandoah being chased wide by John Tokarua. Cal Smith. Iroquois have really fought hard for those ground balls out of the midfield. Getting the opportunity here to get a lead in this game. Neil Powers. Neil Powers being worked over by Ben Fleming. He finally pops it loose. Nathan Rainey picks up the ground ball up to Terry Sparks. And now to the short stick in Peter Inge. Looking to create something here quickly, the Aussies. Brad Ross, happy to settle it down, get everything set up for a deliberate attack at goal. Oh. Cheeky as you like, Russell Brown nearly sticks that one. His foot was on the line, so there's for the Iroquois get it back. Brian Steen brings it across halfway. Looking dangerous. Gary West Schindler has the shot. Dan Burnham. They recover it and they're happy to settle things down here, the Iroquois. Bit like a track meet this game. Ball going back and forth to either end of the field. Team with the composure now. I expect, I expect to run away with it here. Not much happening off ball from the Iroquois offense. Not giving Dan Burnham many options. Kewa Schindler works off the pick, comes around and scores. Nice. nice little pick and roll move again from the Iroquois behind the net. And that results in another goal. So the Iroquois take the lead. Nine goals to eight in the fourth quarter. Good goal from Gay Schindler. The pick man behind the goal, giving Gay that room to come right around. No help from the Australian defence. Placed it right over the goalkeeper's shoulder. As we might see on this replay, little stick fake and then right over his shoulder in the top corner of the net. Excellent goal for the Iroquois. Iroquois again with the ground ball through Ed Shenandoah. On the fast break, Gary Wise, Schindler. Oh, oh, Neil Powers, they're scoring it well now. Talk Neil Powers, great bounce shot, overhand, bouncing it into the top corner. That's great midfield work from Ed Shenandoah. He's done a lot of work this week. And Iroquois get out to a two goal lead over Australia, leading 10 goals to eight in the fourth quarter of the Bonds Minute play. And again, Australia unable to score to the right of screen. They didn't score in the second quarter and as yet haven't scored in the fourth quarter. Peter Inge again for Australia. 
in the house of Wyatt Shenandoah. Picks it up, puts the hammer down, gets out of trouble. Now Australia looking to set something up. Gordon Purdy with a little dodge, just getting things started for the Aussies. Little flip over to James Inge. Now Gordon again. Little dish inside to James Inge, a bit ambitious, but backed up by Scott Griffin. Moved backside to Russell Brown and force feeds, force the feed in. Can't get it to land, so therefore it will be a turnover. The requires to get the ball in their offensive end. Gay okay, Schindler being followed out by Terry Sparks. Loses his balance but gets an, a handy little pass off. Alan Jones. He requires must control possession here. I'm going to run some time off this clock. Two goal lead midway through the fourth quarter. They've got to be, it's a, it's a thin line to walk here. They've got to be constructive. But they've also got to occupy possession. Gordon Purdy trying to shut out the attackman there. Alan Jones holds on to it. Because that is a mismatch. Gawa Schindler with Gordon Purdy. As we see here, Gaywaz gets a shot off. He falls over as he shoots. It's backed up by the Iroquois and they get possession. To Neil Powless. Have another whistle on the play. See what the referees have to say here. Ten more miles, guys. Ten more miles. Yep. Bear down, everybody. Bear down. Just ten miles of your leg, guys. Hardest ten miles, guys. Here starting with possession. Dan Burnham. Dan defended by Matthew Schomburg. Dan Burnham takes him left side. Shot goes wide. Backed up by the Iroquois. I think on that occasion, he was almost in the crease, but the Iroquois get it back. Alan Jones. Alan Jones. Working his way in towards the double team, but now decides to move it on to JD Jones. JD Jones, a strong mover. Tom Cahill guarding him, but he gets the shot off. Nathan Rainey clears it out of defence. Nice. Yep, some strong work, and now the Aussies are on the fast break. Gives it to top right. Nathan Moose steps in for the shot and misses. And the Iroquois retain position. He was closest to it when the ball crossed the line, much to his surprise, I think, on that occasion. Look, we still lead by two, ten goals to eight in the fourth quarter. Jonathan Kane takes it across halfway for Iroquois. Kicks it over to Joel Printer. Guys on the transition here. Oh! Just throws that little dip and dunk shot. It just goes over the top of the goal. Looked like Delby Powers. And he taps himself in the head. He's not too happy about that miss. And I know that he should be, but can't be helped. Either way, Iroquois back with possession. Nice split dodge. Comes around. Has that shot and it goes in. And yes, he can celebrate because they've now got a two goal lead, the Iroquois. A three goal lead, sorry. 11 to 8 they are now. Kasim come in here, absorbs that rap check, turns on his left and throws it straight between uh, Warren Brown's legs. Almost a no-look shot from Neil Powers. Gets off the ground before he sees the goal. The defenseman did everything he could there. Gave him that push early, threw a rap check, gave him another push. He stepped, jumped and it was home. That was a great attacking move from the Iroquois. And we've got a timeout call with the Iroquois Nationals leading Australia 11 goals to eight in the fourth quarter of this bronze medal playoff.
sorry, the Australians must be concerned at this stage with a three goal, um, being three goals down. And the Iroquois on a roll. They must score soon with only eight minutes in the game to come away from this tournament without a bronze medal they will not be happy and contrary to that the Iroquois a bronze medal would be probably almost the equivalent to a gold as far as they're concerned and see the crowd starting to lift the Australians and Shannon Dine, Peter Inge Peter Inge does it again out the front, fast break to David Whiteman quick shot and a quick goal that is orthodox and effective Peter Inge has been very convincing in the midfield. See him there pick up his own ground ball. David Whiteman on the righty 45. Joe Solomon no chance. Let's see if we can see that shot on the replay. Well, I don't know what John Dennett, the Australian coach, said to them during that timeout, but seems to have paid dividends already. Australia closed the gap with Iroquois Nationals leading 11 goals to nine. They probably said, Peter, win me the, win me the ground ball out of the midfield and here he comes again he's got it again here the crowd lifting their team Gordon Purdy bringing it down now for the Australians Scott Griffin gives it over to James Buchanan Ozzy's happy to settle it down throws it over to to David Whiteman from behind, attacks with his left hand, gets double teamed, falls over, but there's a there's a call on the play. We have an interference call by the Iroquois defenseman. Very willing, but a little bit loose on that slide. So now Ryan Garnsworthy with a quick move on his right hand, and a quick goal again for the Aussies. And that one went five hole straight between the goalkeeper's legs. Now look at this celebration, he's really going on with it now. Trying to fire the crowd up, get them behind the Australians as they come back at the Iroquois. The Iroquois still leading, 11 goals to 10. Let's see this, it just shook the man off. Joe Solomon couldn't get down there to that one. He had a big tournament and a big day today, but couldn't get down to that. The Australians being told, being called for the interference. Iroquois come up with a ground ball. Uh oh, this is dangerous. Gordon Purdy on the fast break. To Nathan Roos, down to David Whiteman. Comes down, fake high, and shoots it low. And now we have an all even ball game. 11 goals apiece. The Australians can score so quickly. Really is a disciplined move. And Whiteman just made so sure of that. Just lifted up Solomon with a little stick fake, tiptoed around the crease, watched it go in. Three goals in the space of three minutes for Australia, tying the ball game up. Iroquois must stop them here. This time, Schomburg for the Australians takes the face off. Ball's loose, picked up by John Tokarua, and now Whiteman has it. Now he's pushing hard, kicks it behind to Nathan Roost, who feeds James Buchanan on the, on the cut, fakes the flip, holds it himself. Now he's moving, having another go at him. Feet inside by Whiteman to Rainey, goes wide, and the Iroquois try to recover it, but Rainey rides him hard, and the ball comes out of bounds. The fans ask the question, the referee, and now the refs will talk about it. Guns where he brings it in for Australia. a great move, strong move, the defenseman thought he had him, here comes a very excessive celebration by Ryan Garnsworthy, 
He's got this stick, he's gone around and he's told everyone about it. You can see here, the check comes on, but he's strong enough to hold on to it, and then he sticks it himself. It's a good dodge and a good strong move, and it gives the Australians a lead with a 12-11 lead in the dying minutes of this bronze medal playoff. Let's just hope he's not celebrating too soon with still time to play. That could fire up the Uruguay national team. It has been, they have been awarded the ball. I think the unsportsmanlike has been given to Ryan Garnsworthy. And so the Iroquois have an extra man advantage. Aussies extend their pressure. The ball bounces right in front of the goals. Warren Brown comes up with it. And Purdy moves it on to Russell Brown. Aussies happy with possession at this late stage. Russell Brown moving into his preferred left side. Gives it out to James Buchanan. You can hear the Iroquois coach asking for the stall call from the referees. The Aussies not making any attack. That's a good wrap check. Well, the second one was good at least. It came, made the ball spill out. The Aussies recover the ground ball. And with two minutes left in the game, James Buchanan gives it off to Brian Garnsworthy. He comes in again, has a shot, rebounds out. It's quite a little work from the Iroquois' defence. Fakes the pass and then flips it to himself, but uh-oh, he comes up to Russell Brown. He's now powering in on his, on his preferred left side, but it's been intercepted. Good work by Mark Burnham. With two minutes, 15 remaining, Australia leading 12-11. Alan Jones brings the ball forward. They need to have a little composure here. They're stopped here by the Australians. They recover the ground ball. Jonathan Kane picks it up. We've got him on the run here. Gawa Shinla trying to back in. The ball comes out of that spot by the um, rat check by Gordon Purdy. Warren Brown backs it up. And so the Australians get it back. That is a critical backup. Iroquois just lacking that little bit of composure just to set something up so they could tie this game up. Now they don't have possession. Less than two minutes remaining. And Fleming being pressured. Double team now, drops it, flips it back to Warren Brown. Gordon Purdy for Australia. Aussie's just playing catch now, trying to wind down the clock. Matty Windsor clears the ball up to Scott. Yeah, uh, Scott Griffin. And now to Nathan Rainey. Time out called with less than two minutes remaining in this bronze medal playoff between Australia and Iroquois Nationals with Australia leading 12-11. As we come back in from timeout, with one minute 11 remaining in the fourth quarter of this bronze medal playoff between Australia and the Iroquois Nationals, Australia leading 12-11. It's a handy one goal buffer, and they do have possession. The Iroquois will be interesting to see what they try and do to gain possession here. They're going to have to extend their defence. Perhaps the goalie will come out of the goal and pick up an offensive player, which will allow them to double-team where the ball is. 
but with one minute one minute remaining they must gain possession they cannot let this time wind down any longer here we go he requires with two men on the ball and they've subbed Solomon out and they brought Chris Hops in to run this 10 man ride Purdy takes it back throws it right in the back corner with Ryan Brown he requires have to chase here James Inge now for the Aussies running it up nice riding by Gaywa Schindler can't can't move James Inge though the second slide can and they gain possession timeout call to the Iroquois Nationals less than a minute remaining Australia leading 12-11 that was excellent committed riding by the Iroquois by gaining possession there they now have one opportunity with less than a minute to go to tie this ball game up remembering that the winner of this game wins the bronze medal in this tournament the Iroquois in a great position they've had a fantastic game they started well the Aussies pegged them back but now they have their they must score here to tie this game and send it into extra time Interesting to see how the Aussies play it defensively, whether they just pack it in in sort of a zone situation. They might try and play a six-man zone in these dying seconds. But the Iroquois, this really is going to test them out. They've had great belief this week. They played well against the US to get to this position. And isolating Scott Burnham. Scott Burnham by himself. With John Tokarua defending him. Scott Burnham. He's passed on. Ball goes up top, but it passes wide. Okay, Rush Schindler picks it up. Yeah, and there's still time here for the Iroquois to score. He checks the clock. 20 seconds remaining. He's moving in. They must score here, the Iroquois. Good defence from the Australian team. Over to Alan Jones. Someone must go to the goal. They must get a shot on the cage here. Good rap check by Gordon Purdy. Pops it up. And here come the Aussies. And that's the ball game. I'm quite happy now. And that's time. Australia win the bronze medal at the 2002 World Lacrosse Championships, beating the Iroquois Nationals by 12 goals to 11. You can hear the fans celebrating that. The local fans enjoying that comeback from the Aussies. Iroquois would be devastated after basically controlling this game up until the beginning of the third quarter. And then coming out in the fourth quarter, taking an early lead, an early three-goal lead, only to have Australia peg them back. It, is, it must be hard for them at this point to accept that defeat, but with only a one-goal game, the Iroquois have got to be happy with that. That is the closest they've ever come to Australia. Australia, who lost by two goals to Canada in the last game. Sorry, one goal to Canada in the last game. So that, that just goes to show how tight this tournament has been in these with these lower ranked teams. Australia, Canada and the Iroquois have been very close. The Aussies looking more relieved than excited at the end of that game. Good sportsmanship's been a point through this whole tournament. They might play hard on the field, but they all congratulate each other well after each game. Yeah, the game's been played in terrific spirit. And the fans have enjoyed it. It's been a great match. This has been Stuart Wilkinson with Kim Gillespie at the bronze medal playoff between Australia and the Iroquois Nationals with Australia winning the bronze medal 12-11 and join us again for the gold medal playoff between the United States of America and Canada.